Well, good afternoon, everybody. So here we are again in Northamptonshire. It's Lynn here from Lion Learners, Northamptonshire, Bedfordshire and Buckinghamshire. And we're doing our final animal classification session of the week. And if you've not quite worked out what that is at the moment, because it's reflecting quite badly, is my fish pond here in Northampton. So, let's have a quick recap on what we have done this week. So we have done, oh, is this going to film? So far, we had mammals on Monday, but we didn't have any cows or bulls, of course, with Kristen. And then we had amphibians on Tuesday, so things that live in water and out of water, with Rachel on Tuesday. And then I did birds here in Northamptonshire where we looked at Bessie the chicken on Wednesday. And yesterday we had Claire who looked at reptiles and had her beautiful corn snake. So today we're looking at fish. So let's see if we can film some of the fish here in my garden. So in here we have got Nemo and friends. And if I'm really honest, they don't actually have names. But let's see what we can see. And if you have sound up, you'll hear that lovely bubbling sound of the water. And the beautiful blackbird as well in behind in the trees, calling away. He's quite stunning. So I'm going to just move around and let you have a little look at the fish in our pond a minute while I get close up because I've got a fish here that if we can see it's just come right up to the surface because he's actually sunbathing which I shall mention in a moment here's another one of the big fish coming up I'm going to leave the camera here a minute so you can see these fish going past backwards and forth and then we'll have a close-up shall we Let's see what we can see if we scan out a little bit. So, fish then. There are around 33,000 species of fish in the world and probably many that we've never even discovered yet. And some fish live in what we call freshwater. These would be freshwater fish right here. And some fish, as we all know well, live in the sea. They are what we call saltwater fish. And saltwater fish include things like sharks, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Let's zoom out again and get the fishes to come out. So what makes a fish a fish? Well, let's see if we can keep zooming in on some of them and try and find a few of them. I think, Richard, you wouldn't pass me their food, would you? The food. I think what we'll do is we'll just feed them a little bit and then we'll try and get them to come to the surface so that we can see them a bit closer up. So what makes a fish a fish? Well, the most obvious one though is of course that they live in water. And these fish should come up to the surface now and start to feed. Let's try and capture them. Not easy holding up a phone safe whilst trying to capture fish. And not losing your phone in the water. Can we see any fish feeding here or can we just see close-ups of my pond? Well I can see plenty of fish feeding but I'm not sure you guys can with this. So I'm going to detach the phone from the thing. Bear with me a second everybody if you're watching in. Right, I try and direct it myself to see what we can see. Where are the fish? It's a dreadful image, isn't it? Here we go, well, that's a better image. So let's stay with that one a minute and hopefully we can see. I do apologise for such poor quality today. It's actually, the sun's in my eyes as I try and film these critters. So here we go. 
So first of all, of course, we know that all fish live in water, whether that's salt water or fresh water, like these. These fish here are koi carp, and some of these fish are about four years old now. And some of one of them, particularly a large one, if we can find it later, is actually probably about 10 years old and probably the mother of these fish here. So all fish live in water. And as we learned earlier this week with some other critters that you looked at, these are vertebrate animals, which means they actually have a backbone and they have a skeleton. And all fish have a skeleton of sorts, but some fish have a more cartilage based skeleton. So it's a bit more rubbery. And a shark is one of those particular animals. Whereas fish have a bone, these fish have a bony skeleton. And all fish have gills. So if we could see close up, we might not be able to on these today, but I will show you some gills close up in a moment. And the gills allow the fish to breathe underwater. And the water passes through the gills. Let's have a close up of some gills and see what this looks like. So here is a great white shark obviously not living in my pond right now and here we can see the gills of this so a shark is also a fish and one of the things that they have in common is these gills they have fins and they're usually very streamlined a shark's very streamlined because it needs to swim quite quickly to catch its prey and this particular fish this great white shark can swim at over 40 miles an hour which is fairly incredible. So let's go back. So we know that they've got the backbone. We know they live in water and they have gills and they also have scales. So a bit like Claire looking at the reptiles, if you see close up to the fish here, you can see that they've actually got scales on their bodies and they're all quite busy eating now. But if I zoom in on this big white one, big Nemo there, Nemo actually is covered, you should hopefully be able to see, in lots of scales. And a bit like a reptile, those scales protect the body. Slimy body, whereas the reptiles don't have a slimy body. And then that also protects them from disease. They're all heading up the other side of the pond now, so we might have to head up there. So the other thing that fish have, as well as their fins, is that they all lay eggs. And that's why we know a dolphin is not a fish which i shall share with you in a moment so let's have a closer up of this fish here look so scaly body look at those beautiful fins and can swim quite quickly actually got a nice streamlined body so that it can swim and get away from things should it need to get away from predators which i'll talk about in a moment so when they lay their eggs they actually lay thousands of eggs and like reptiles they don't look after their babies when they hatch they leave them to it which I'll talk about again in a minute so let's have a look at why a dolphin isn't a fish then because obviously a dolphin lives in water doesn't it so dolphins as we know are mammals in this week a cold-blooded animal can't keep itself warm it has to rely on its outside temperature to keep itself warm here we go let's have a close-up of them feeding and so these fish when it gets really cold in winter will go to the bottom of the pond and virtually hibernate they will only come up on very warm days and they don't really feed at all because they don't need to. They haven't got any warmth to help them digest their food. So they stop eating and they go into a, a phase of kind of hibernation. There's the big Nemo look. 
fantastic. Whereas the dolphin is warm-blooded and doesn't go into any form of hibernation, it doesn't actually need to. It keeps itself warm through the foods that it digests. So let's talk about the largest fish then. So the largest fish being a whale shark. And a whale shark is the size of a bus and weighs 40 tonnes. And the smallest fish is a bit like something I'm going to show you very shortly. The sm smallest fish is smaller than my little fingernail and it is called a Filipino goby, a tiny, tiny little fish. So let's talk about their life cycle then. So the female fish and the white one here is a female, we believe. And we can tell she's a female because she's a bit rounder. Female fish are more rounded in this species. And the male fish are a little bit more slender and long. And she lays her eggs and koi carp can lay up to 30,000 eggs in one batch. And the male fish swims along and he fertilizes the eggs. And then depending on the temperature of the water, they take three to four days only to hatch. And I'm going to try and zoom up close to this one now. Look, oh, it's swimming away. Look, can't see him now. It's spotted that there's food. But whilst we're here, we've got some damselflies come to see us. Here he is again. So what they eat when they're babies is little tiny bits of algae. I'm going to zoom up really close to the water. You'll see little things floating around. They'll eat plankton type things when they're babies. And it's not till they're a year old that some fish start to eat um, other insects and other fish. So koi carp would actually eat their young if they could spot them. So the fish spend a lot of time hiding when they're babies to keep themselves safe. It's the only way they can keep safe is by just hiding amongst the weed. And then they grow bigger and bigger until they become more visible. And once they become more visible, these fish wouldn't eat them. Obviously, other big, bigger fish might be, might do. So mum fish just abandons them, really, as eggs, as does dad. They have nothing to do with bringing them up. They kind of leave them to get on with it and they forage around. And when they get to about a year old, they start to eat mini beasts and things. So these particular fish are omnivores. So that means they eat vegetables and other animals. And the animals they eat, I'm going to show you in a second. Some fish are only carnivores and some fish are only herbivores. So some just eat meat, that is a carnivore. And some just eat vegetation, as in a herbivore. But these species here are omnivores, eating both meat and vegetation. So let's see if we can see what I found earlier in the pond. So I did a bit of pond dipping this morning for you all. And this is a cat bowl. I'm going to try and put it in the shade a minute. Not a very good shade there. So we're going over here to see what these critters are. So in here is just a standard cat bowl, so it's not a very large thing. And you might see something swimming around there. And if I put my little finger down, you'll see the size of it, look. Actually two in there, the other one's so hard to see. Right at the bottom. Tiny little thing there, look, in the bottom right of my camera now. But the bigger one is some form of probable dragonfly larvae or damsonfly larvae. And you're going to do mini beasts on Monday. And these metamorphosis, so they actually change from being this mini beast that they are now. And they come to the surface and fly off. And then they find another pond or stay in this pond and then they lay their eggs. And my fish would eat these. So there we go. That's one of the things that they might eat. And these things live off little tiny beasts themselves before they become airborne. And if we're lucky, another damsonfly or dragonfly might visit us today. I'll pop those back in the pond in a moment so that they can live another day and then we'll go back to the fish. Here are the beautiful fish. So we know that these are omnivores. And let's talk about the food chain then. So 
we know that these now eat smaller fish, but what would eat them? Well, quite a lot of things eat fish, actually. So any carnivorous animal, and that means any meat-eating animal, a lot of them do like fish. So we've got bears in Antarctica that love to fish out the salmon. We've got other birds would eat these. Other fish would eat them. So, of course, bigger fish, carnivorous fish, like sharks would eat these, obviously, if these lived in the sea. And birds of prey. But it's not just birds of prey that eat fish. So we had a bird come down only a couple of days ago and have a peek at our pond to see if he could get access. And that's a bird that we call a heron. And he realised that we built our pond in such a design that he can't put his legs in to wade along while he spears my fish. So he had to fly off again. But he did, give a, did have a good look. So, shall we recap on fish while we have a look at them? eating their fish food. They live in water and they have backbones, so they are vertebrate animals. They have gills and scales and fins. Oh, good shot there of that one coming up to the surface, hopefully. They lay eggs and lots of them. They are cold-blooded and there's thousands and thousands of them. And we know that they include things like sharks. They include things like this one here, which is a tuna fish, which if I can zoom out, I'm not sure you can see that picture terribly well at all because it's a blue background. And this beautiful fish, and this is a very specialized fish because this fish actually is venomous. So that means that this fish is poisonous. This is a beautiful, lionfish from a very tropical sea and it would live on a coral reef in the sea and that fish if you were to get stuck by the barbs on it here that would be very painful so there we have fish if we zoom back and have a look at their little habitat so we try and make sure their habitats in line with what we call the animal welfare needs so we try to make sure that they've got a really beautiful environment with good quality water to live in good quality feed and we test the water as well and we provide extra oxygen to the water look over there and that is fish for the day so I'm going to see if I can scan down here you might not see it because we've got a damselfly just arrived to say hello and actually there's two of them there there's two of them there having a little bit of a mating session about to lay eggs in my pond which is perfect because that's something else to feed the fish for next year so that's it from Lion Learners in Northamptonshire today. And on Monday, you have got mini beasts. So we're going to look at mini beasts, mainly land dwelling, I think, mini beasts. So not like the ones we saw today. Enjoy your bank holiday weekend and stay safe. Bye for now.